Okay. Um, so this is um, our session for um, Thursday, the 7th. Uh, we're working on our unit six, uh, programming assignment six. Um, I don't have uh, any, any too much to go over today. I uh, haven't had anybody join yet live, but um, uh, maybe I'll, I'll go for five minutes and then I'll um, see if anybody joins, needs to ask any questions. Um, um, so, um, oh, um, you know, kind of as a reminder, um, I am doing kind of office hours and things from basically from nine until uh, 12 ish or so. But I, during that time, I do the help sessions for this class and another class kind of. Uh, but um, I've kind of been doing these in the journalism auditorium. So, you know, feel free if, if, if you need to um, uh, stop by face to face um, and are free during this time. Um, and would prefer um, you can maybe. Uh, uh, find me over in the, the journalism altar in the big room down there. So, um, so I, I think that we pretty much covered um, all of uh, everything that really needed to be said on the um, sixth program assignment on the last uh, help session. So you might want to refer to that if you're trying to look for details and uh, more details in the help session. I, I kind of got uh, people started on it um, and talked about all four of the functions. Uh, let me bring up um, the uh, description here. So the description on this one kind of uh, uses some mathematical notation. So uh, in this case, you might not be able to see it too well if, if you render it, um, render the markdown, uh, the the, uh, the the math LaTeX notation won't show up. So, so this is a good one that, to to use the PDF to view it from. So, um, I didn't see here. Which, uh, Um, so I, I didn't post an announcement about this, but um, one thing there was a, a, a bug in the auto grading script um, that uh, a student or two had run into. I think I fixed it for for everybody. So um, anybody that I had fixed it before you had um, accepted the assignment should have been good. And anybody after I ended up just going in and, and kind of fixing it by hand um, once I understood the issue. Uh, but um, if, if when you commit uh, your your code to the repository, especially if when once you're finished and you commit the um, the sixth task, so there was an issue. There was actually an issue in the third and the sixth task on the, running the auto grader. So you probably won't see it. If, you won't see it when you run the tests on your you know inside your dev box uh, on your clone of the repository. But when they got pushed to the repository uh, to, to GitHub and the uh, auto grader ran them, uh, it wasn't correctly running uh, task six and actually task three as well. So, um, so all that means is that uh, if, if somehow I missed something for somebody, and uh, you know, and you think you had like all of the tasks, especially like task six, but um, uh, task six doesn't seem to be, be passing. Uh, basically, it wasn't passing because it wasn't uh, actually being run. Um, um, but so if you see that, then um, let me know. Um, you might be running into that issue, and, and we need to fix the, um, um, the 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 file that uh, defines how to run the tests and things uh, for each assignment uh, for your clone of the repository. Um, yeah, and besides that, uh, I don't know if I need to talk more about the, the, the task three and six. There, there's not a whole lot really that you need to do on task three and six, um, but um, um, uh, there's a, a small thing. So you need to try and count, count up all the number of operations. So on task three, um, I did ask you for the linear uh, implementation of, of calculating the Fibonacci numbers. Um, that you count up all the operations. So you should include additions, subtraction, any arithmetic operations, additions, subtractions, um, 
and uh, any like assignment you should count as an operation. Um, the um, um, what else? A Boolean comparisons, right? Um, less than, greater than. Um, don't forget that, like, if you for the linear version, you should have a loop of some kind, probably a for loop. So inside of the for loop, there, there's three por parts usually. So there's one part which is the initialization. That only happens actually once, but that's that's usually an assignment. So you should maybe count that as um, an operation that occurs outside of the loop, right? But then the two other statements, there's there's a, a check, to, um, which is the middle part of the for loop typically, uh, which will be some Boolean expression to check whether the loop is done or not, right? And that runs every time the loop runs, right? And if you did the algorithm for the linear, the, the way um, it was described here, you, your loop should actually run uh, in minus one time because you need to start at two and go up to n, basically. Right. So, so it actually run n minus one times total. If you started at one and went to n, it would run exactly n times. But uh, by starting at two, you're executing the loop n minus one time. Right. Um, but but yeah yeah anyway, it's, in terms of counting up your operations inside of the loop, you should count the comparison to check whether the loop is done. So that's done every loop iteration. Um, and uh, in fact, that might be done one more time because when when that comparison is done. Uh, and and it's um, um, and and it's false. Um, the, that that's when the loop stopped. You know, but you don't have to worry about that. So, and, you know, but but yeah, technically that comparison might actually happen in times instead of uh, in minus one times. But um, and then also the third part of the for loop is uh, usually something to increment uh, a counter index, like incre incrementing i. But that's an example of an arithmetic expression. Uh, you're actually adding one to a value. Um, and uh, technically, it's doing both um, an addition and an assignment. So I, I probably didn't even count that myself. But uh, but yeah, I mean, you could count that both as, as two operations in that case. So adding one, um, so an addition, and then assigning the result back into I. Um, so the, the assignment there. So anyway, the, the correct way to do it, there, there's two tasks, two task case in task three, like I talked about. So you probably don't have to do anything for the first one. It just uh, it does uh, it just times how long it takes to run by wall clock time and reports that. But uh, so you should run that and, and understand it. But um, um, yeah, to, to get the, the, the operation count test to pass, you, you probably have to put in your own um, values for like the c1 and the c2 constant you, you probably should break it up the same same way so c1 is the number of operations that i had counted or included um before the loop starts so outside of the loop and then there's n minus one versions of the of the iterations of the loop that'll occur and so c2 was my count of the number of operations that occur for every loop iteration right so yeah, if you add it, if you if you add up those in in your operation operation count, um, and then you test that um, afterwards, I mean those should agree, right? Um, likewise for task six, I think I mentioned this briefly. As you have to do a similar thing, so there, there's there's two test cases. One is again just uh, timing, uh, running uh, your memoization and your constant version. The, the, the constant versions is really pretty trivial, trivial here. So you just count up the number of operations. But again, um, and, and, and yeah, in this case, you, you know, I, I mean, I guess you can change um, um, this value. Um, so I'm, I'm not gonna make an issue if, if you don't count some operations that I think you should. In fact, now that I think about it, you know, I might've missed one or two operations that I should count for like my constant version, so. But yeah, for this one, you can change this value to, to match your count. Um, and um, oh, I, I skipped over. So the the um, to make it a little bit simpler, when you do the recursive version of the Fibonacci, um, you don't have to count every operation in the case. Just 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 count. Um, I mean, you can if you want to, but uh, but you can also just do this by just counting the number of times that the function actually runs. So that that's that's um, sufficient enough to get a feel for the exponential. Um, Amount of work that uh, the the recurs the, this recursive implementation does. So, um,
but but uh, yeah, you should kind of match, if you're if you're counting up the number of times the function enters, it should match this expression. So um, um, I can maybe talk about this expression. I might talk about this next Tuesday a little bit. Uh, talk, when we're reviewing for the first task, um, I might talk a little bit about analysis of algorithms, and this would be a good thing to kind of how this expression comes out, right? Uh, but yeah, the number of times that the actual function is Fibonacci recursive should be called in the recursive implementation should match this if, if you're doing it the way it was described. Um, so it's basically a function of two raised to the power of n. So whatever n is actually raised to the power of n plus one divided by the square root of five. Um, it's or not two, but but phi raised to the power of n plus one. Okay? So um, this uh, the Fibonacci sequence has um, a relationship to the golden ratio, which is what the phi constant is. So um, you ought to read the Wiki, Wikipedia article that that um, uh, on the Fibonacci sequence um, if you're interested in that. So what the relationship is, but but because of that, because the Fibonacci uh, Fibonacci sequence is governed by the the golden ratio, uh, the Operation counts and things um, often um, are uh, have some relationship to that that, that fee uh, golden ratio constant. Um, all right, and then yeah, so the the Fibonacci constant is kind of trivial. Um, but then likewise for the Fibonacci memoization, this has some similarity to the recursive version, but using lookup instead of um, um, doing uh, many, many recursive calls to calculate uh, things. So, so using a table lookup. Uh, but here again, th this might be all, th this is kind of, you want, might want to treat this similar to the linear version. So, you know, you'll have some operations that occur um, um, outside of when you need to check and do a calculation to insert a value that's missing into the table. Um, so um, that's actually what my what I use for C2 here. So, so if you want to match, um, and again, you know, the, 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 you can change these numbers, um, but um, I, I had it as two operations occurring uh, for the lookup, right? Um, and then six that had to occur if the the value hadn't been calculated yet, and you had to calculate it. At that point. So again, you know um, the, these numbers. I don't. You don't have to have them exactly the same count that I have here. In fact, if I go back and look at it, I might adjust these a bit. So, um, but, uh, but yeah, in that case, you know, you're expecting the the number of calculations for to calculate say forty in is forty to occur in minus one times. Um, so it's a C1 times the N minus one, because basically uh, it doesn't have to, once it gets down to one, um, um, those values will be in the table. So if you calculate 40, it has to do it 39 times, uh, self recursively 39 times till it gets down to one of those base cases where, where one is already calculated. Um, um, And then, but but actually, the lookups occur in times. Um, so forty, that should be n plus one. So so again, you know, for for, for all forty cases, I mean, sometimes you do have to do the calculation. But whether you do the calculation or not, uh, you are going to have to go and end up looking up the value. But um, that should only happen basically once for each of the values in the the, the sequence. Uh, so if you're starting at forty, um, it'll happen in times. Maybe that should be n plus one. But yeah, it came up as n for me here. Oh, that's that's probably right because um, yeah, that's right because it, it, it once it gets down to one again, uh, it'll stop. So so it'll be uh, it'll have to be forty down to, to one or, or in uh, in this case lookups that end up occurring. So, I mean, there are some lookups that occur. Um, 
inside of the calculation as well to, to retrieve the value from the table, but those should be being counted um, in the, the C1 constant here. So. All right. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and end this session here. Um, I mean, I'll stick around, see if, if people uh, show up, um, wanna ask some uh, questions in person here. Uh, but otherwise, you know, if you need to um, um, send emails about the assignment or about anything, um, I mentioned last time, so we are coming up to our first test. So be aware of that. So, so next week we're gonna kind of break our pattern um, and we won't have our usual quiz and assignment. Um, the next week is all set aside for uh, reviewing the stuff you've done so far. Um, and uh, do, doing our uh, first test or midterm tests. So. Okay, that's it for the session, um, and I will see you guys later then.